Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bash Harry and this is the Harry Knit or if you're new here, hi, hello. This is the Harry Knit where we do a lot of content about knitting and all that good stuff. So please subscribe if you are interested. Uh, if you've seen one of my other videos before, this isn't my room. It's my sister's room and I'm on her bed because <laughs> I am thinking, I'm not thinking, I'm actually doing the video, but I am thinking of doing this video that I've seen quite a lot on YouTube and that is how much can I knit in an hour. It got me curious, admittedly, because I I think I knit pretty fast since I knit continentally. You know, I've seen a lot of videos and like a lot of people are pretty fast knitters and I'm curious to see how much I can knit and have kind of like a proper calculations and math on how many stitches I can do in an hour, which would be very interesting. So I got my phone. We're going to be setting a timer. And I also got the project that I'm working on. And this is a very simple project. It's a hat. I am making a pattern draft that will hopefully be up sometime next month or in the next two months because I'm making a free beanie pattern because I always that was how I started knitting and that's how I want to teach people to make stuff especially beginners who want to learn how to knit I think beanies are the way to go so I'm making a pattern using chunky yarn this is the Sadar Hayfield bonus chunky I think I've got in like this little cute bag that my mom got I just wanted to take some time out, stop knitting on my bigger projects and work on this. I think I've like frogged this and redid it like three times already, just trying to get the gauge correct and make sure it's something that everyone can wear or like it fits most head shapes. Uh, I know this is going to be like an hour long, an hour long, but my camera, the one I'm using right now, only films up to like 30 minutes. So this video is probably going to be cut and edited and all that stuff because I don't think I'm going to be talking for the whole time of it and I'm in my sister's room so I can be my most comfortable which would be good and yeah I guess we'll get started timer is set for one hour let's go this uh, project is very small it's about 36 stitches so I'm curious to see how much um, progress I can make within the hour I was thinking about whether or not I was gonna do it in the most comfortable and most normal way I find myself knitting which is usually outside in the living room while watching TV or during a DJ set but I feel like with that kind of stuff, there's a lot of other factors in it, and I feel very scientific today, <laughs> uh, and I wanted to see how much I could reasonably knit in an hour when I'm not so tired, or like when my mind isn't so focused on knitting, I guess. But really, it's probably just an excuse for me to spend some time to knit. Because I think last month during Ramadan, I didn't really find myself knitting a lot. One, it was probably because I just didn't really have the time. Usually I knit during lunch or when I'm DJing or when I'm out and about. But when it comes to Ramadan and I'm not eating, I'm fasting. And I didn't have any DJ sets because I took the month off. I really didn't find myself wanting to knit. Mostly I just slept because <laughs> I was really tired or I was spending time with like my family and I just didn't feel like bringing my knitting along and it was I wouldn't say it was a bad slump. I've had worse slumps of knitting that has like gone on for years but it's always a hobby that I, I've always found therapeutic and it's definitely something that I've gotten more into um, in the past year or so. I was a like accessories knitter 
when I was first starting out, I wouldn't say first starting out, but like the first three years of my knitting journey, I guess, when I was like in my teens, I definitely started off with free patterns, the ones that I could find on Ravelry. I remember I made like uh, a lot of hats, quite a few hats. I made a teddy bear once for a birthday gift for an old partner whom I don't speak to anymore for obvious reasons. <laughs> and I also made a chevron blanket uh, by Pearl Soho, which was a rainbow blanket for a friend of mine who was leaving me. No, she was just leaving the country. And that was probably still to this day one of my favorite gifts I ever made for somebody, mostly because it was something that I wanted to give her as a love for her. And even though I made so many mistakes on that blanket, like the pattern for the chevron was a little off for some parts of it, I still really loved it. And I loved that she loved it. But that was back in like 2014, 2015, I want to say. It was just something that I really enjoyed doing for other people. Uh, but I never really made anything for myself, especially when I was in uni. I think I kind of stopped knitting. I made like little hearts for people, literally giving them my heart. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I made some bunnies and cats and a little monkey which was so cute but I think during uni I was just very much not a part of that knitting community which I kind of regret not being able to take full advantage of when I was in the UK. I was really into yarn and I was interested in all of that but I didn't really find the time to do it or really enjoy it, to be honest. I think life was going a little bit haywire for me, uh, admittedly. Like, I could have made myself a scarf and I would have really enjoyed that, but I just did not have the time or the effort to do it, to be honest. But now that I've graduated and I've moved back, now I see that I have the time to make the stuff that I really want to make, which is clothes. Uh, I would consider myself still a pretty new garment maker knitter. I've been doing it for about two years now. So during COVID, I picked back it up. I picked it back up because what else is there to do when it was COVID and we were stuck at home? Uh, I really picked up knitting again and I started doing garments. And I still remember the first sweater I made which was using like a hundred percent acrylic it was the balloon sweater by Petite Knit which in hindsight probably wasn't a good beginner sweater because it had like short rows and a lot of things that I was not used to but I think the reason why I chose that one was because it was this like top-down raglan type sweater and at that time I really wanted something with balloon sleeves. I was really obsessed with balloon sleeves so I made it and I think it took me like about a month and a half to finish because it was using 3.5 millimeter needles and the second one that I made was the diaphanous raglan by Jesse May Designs except I didn't have the diaphanous raglans because I didn't know anything about mohair. And then the third, I think, was the... I made the ripple crop top by Jessie Made. I also made the framework bralettes. Really love making bralettes. I really want to knit myself one again. You know, after that happened and COVID kind of slowed down here in Brunei, I stopped. I stopped uh, knitting because life happened. And then COVID hit again in August and for like a good four months I was so bored out of my mind. I was I started knitting again and then I had an income to spend money on yarn so I did that and it's been very nice and I've been able to make my own patterns and as of filming this it hasn't been up for test knitting yet 
but I think by the time this video is out, it will be in testing, which I'm really excited. It's the A1 vest. It's my very first uh, pattern, and I wanted something that was inspired by my culture and the weather, because for the longest time, I was I was of the mindset that you weren't able to make any like knitted clothes for the summer. It was always going to be hot, but you know, as the years go by and I started knitting more, I just realized that it's about the fibers you pick, it's about what yarn you pick, all these kind of things, and making patterns that, or knitting patterns that you know that you're going to love and that you're going to wear. There's a bit of a rush when it comes to knitting, I feel. Um, and I know a lot of people who are much smarter than me can explain it better. And I know Kopi Kali, she talked about this, how she likes doing long, um, long-term projects that will take maybe a month or two or more to finish, which good for her because like that sounds amazing and I wish I had that patience. <laughs> Uh, for me, I think the most I will do on a project or that I'll work on a project is like like my Made You Fall dress. I casted that on in May or April, I think, around that time. And I think I'm still finishing it up. I'm working on the skirt section right now. I still need to good six seven inches or so so it hits below my knee. But it's absolutely beautiful. And it's taken me about a month to work on it because I've been working on other projects in between like the vest and this hat which I mentioned before I've been frogging and re-knitting for at least since I got the yarn back in March I want to say but it's made me think a lot about like how what kind of knitter am I am I a slow knitter do I like the feeling of it Am I somebody who likes things quick and fast using chunky needles like these, which is 10 millimeters? And really, I've kind of realized I'm very much an in-between. I've worked on 3.5 for the longest time. That was the only needle set I had, which was 3.5, and I had to use fingering or sport weight yarn for that, and I really did love it. But there's a time when you're making very few knits and sometimes your brain just gets exhausted by a pattern or a whip and you just want to make another one and so I've learned to embrace putting things on hold or on ice and just enjoying the flow of it. Like not to say I'm going to cast new things immediately once I get bored of a pattern because obviously you don't want to have like so many whips but I definitely think that you should really choose patterns that you know you're gonna like. I like to sprinkle in like one chunky, one medium, one uh, fingering pattern so I at least have like three whips in rotation. And usually they're garments, sometimes it's a hat, sometimes it's accessories. I need a frog, um, this blanket that I was supposed to make for a baby. And I think I'm going to block or like frog that. I'm going to start working on it as a teddy bear. Because I think that would be so much cuter. And it's a fast knit. It's for the kid. But ultimately I also have to think about how I'm knitting for myself. Why am I knitting in the first place? Which was I wanted to do it as gift giving. But then... At the same time, I think I didn't feel any enjoyment for myself when it came to making the things that I wanted to make. And so I think that's something that I need to start doing, which is knit stuff for myself. Uh, which is where I want to talk a little bit about garments. Sorry, I'm just checking if the audio is okay because the air condition's on. <laughs> if, I, if I turned off the air condition, there was no way I was going to film this video. Brunei is hot! <laughs> but let's just talk about that very briefly, I guess. I'm sorry that this video is me just chatting to you. It's a whole hour of me just talking my mouth off. <laughs> but I started knitting uh, knitwear, as I said,
during COVID. It was something that had always been on my mind since I started knitting was to make clothes because I, uh, it was something that I really wanted to do. I wanted to make clothes. I thought it was like the coolest thing ever to make your own stuff. But for some reason, it was just not something that I had thought feasible because as I said, I live in perpetual heat in summer. But one thing that I think really helped me a lot with getting over this fear of making my own clothes was just seeing the community that's on Instagram who enjoy making stuff, uh, whether that be through crochet or knitting or even sewing. It's been really inspiring to say, to see, I would say. Uh, and obviously, yes, we can talk about how social media is kind of like this. It gives you a lot of misconceptions about how fast you can finish a project. There's a lot of feelings of, you know, comparison, which I try to avoid. I've been trying to avoid that for years, I'll be honest, uh, especially when you are a teen living through that digital age. It's kind of something you always have to be mindful of. But I also see it through the context of somebody who does have a very niche hobby in my country, in my, in my like, region. So seeing the community online has been so great because I get to see everyone's makes, especially during this summer time where so many people are making such cool projects that are like great for their weather or their season in turn it's great for my weather and i get a lot of inspiration i think for me personally knitting has always been a hobby that i thought i wasn't able i wasn't able to share with someone else and now in 2022 with social media i've been very fortunate to see that there are people all around the world who are interested in talking about knitting and yarn hauls and their whips and things, which I never thought was really possible. And in that way, I can see social media as a good thing. Obviously, it's within reason uh, for everyone. It's within reason. But I feel like overall, it's made someone like me from a wholly different country on the other side of the world feel very nice and feel like a community. Because I've mentioned it before, we don't have a lot of like yarn shops here, uh, at least local yarn stores. We do have a few uh, online shops, which I get my yarn and they're fantastic. But in general, I think Overall, social media has been a good thing and it's been inspiring to see so many great hobbyists and even small businesses alike make all these really cool pieces with their yarn. This hat is actually working up much faster than I thought it would be. I, I genuinely thought it would take me more than an hour to finish the stockinette, but it looks like I'm going to finish it pretty quickly. I did not think this through. <laughs> I hope one day, I don't know if it's soon, I don't know if it is later, but I do hope that I am able to make more patterns at a reasonable pace. I don't know if any other designers have this problem or struggle, but then there's just so many ideas I have in my head that I want to knit up, but I'm always a bit too scared to. Because with one fail, there's always like, like for every success, there's always a failure and another problem that you have to work through, which I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing to always try again. But that's something I have to work on for myself, admittedly, and also just like finding the time to do everything I want to do. I just watched Nitty Natty's um, video on how to organize or plan out your knitting. 
for summer or how she's doing it and she's doing something called maintenance knitting that is a monkey outside on the trees that is terrifying but yeah she I was talking about how she plans her knits and how she does it all on a piece of paper and I feel like I should start doing that I think for me with a type A kind of personality uh, it would be good of me or uh, to organize when I plan on bringing my knits out I do have kind of like a system I have like a system of oh I'm gonna knit this during my DJ set because it's basic stock and net I'm gonna work on this hat when it's this time so I can write it all down. I'm gonna work on this at home because it's color work, you know, things like that. Which is obviously a very good system. So I kinda of wanna start incorporating that for myself. This hat is working up so quickly. And I feel like I've already knitted up how much I needed to knit up and it's only been like 20 minutes <laughs> whoops I really should have thought this video better oops I feel like this how much can I knit in an hour is gonna be like how much I can knit for 30 minutes but <laughs> I think it's gonna be how much I can knit for 30 minutes clickbait thumbnail uh <laughs> But let me know if you want more of these knit and chat videos. I think they are great to film. I think they are really fun to film. And I just, I really enjoy being with you. And I hope you like listening to me talk and blab about knitting. And just my thoughts. It's mostly just like a stream of consciousness that's pulling through my brain. I left my ruler, so I'm going to come back. This is how much I've done in about 20 minutes. And I think it's actually just about done, actually. I just have to do the shaping. Yeah, that's how much I've been doing. I think it's cute. I think this is going to be a really cute beanie for everyone to wear. I just wish that I brought my scissors along with me. I should mention this is a very chunky beanie. So this works up very quickly. I just didn't realize how quickly it would be. Okay, I'm gonna stop here because it's been about 25 minutes, I think, give or take. Pause. So I've done about, minus the first row, that would be about roughly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So that's 13 rows. I've done about 13 rows and each of them is 36 stitches. So I can do 468 uh, stitches in about 25 minutes, I'm gonna say. Let's round it up. So that's divided by 25. So that's about 18 stitches a minute. Is that fast? I don't think that's fast at all. I don't think that is fast at all, but I I think that is okay. I also think it wholly depends on you as a knitter. I feel like some people are faster knitters when it comes to fingering. I know I'm a faster knitting knitter when it comes to fingering weight yarn. It's chunky knits on chunky needles that even though less stitches, for some reason, I think I knit pretty slow on them. I don't know why, I think it's just the feeling in my hands. Fingering is way more looser to work with. Anyway, I'm gonna take my ruler. I'm gonna see how many, how many inches are there here, and I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. I feel like I should have worked on a much harder project than basic stockinette, but you know what? Let bygones be bygones. Let whatever happens, happens. Is that how they do it correctly? This is a very old ruler that I've had for years. I think I got it at Michael's back in 2016, but I can't remember. No, 2014, I think. Okay, this is about 
I want to say five and a half inches. I think another half inch wouldn't be so bad. So I'm going to do that really quickly. And then we're going to bind off. So let's see if I can finish this hat in about an hour, in like an hour or so, like the next 30 minutes or so. This is a very basic beanie pattern that I'm drafting up, uh, which I know there's so many on the internet, but you know, why not put my own little spin on it? Just because I know what I like in a hat. I know what I enjoy. <laughs> Plus, I think you can't go wrong with a good beanie. I had a phase back in my teens where I only wore hats. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. But it is a nice gift. Okay, let's see how many inches that is. That is about five and a half. It's almost six inches now. Do one more. Because the stitch count for this is a bit different from what it is recommended the gauge uh, in the yarn because I think when it comes to knitting in the round I'm always like off by one stitch which is usually okay except when it comes to um, chunky knits you gotta be careful because like two inches maybe one inch and two stitches maybe one inch and all this kind of stuff so you gotta be careful with how you knit in the round and how you knit stockinette plain okay so we've done about six inches of this very very chunky uh beanie this is what it looks it doesn't look like this so this is cute i really like that and then I'm just going to start shaping the hole, the head. I'm going to start shaping the head and then we should be done. I want this to be like a foldable beanie with a wide brim, but then I realize if I decide to fold it with a wide brim, then it'll be a little difficult to um, just to wear like this because then you'd have extra inches. Actually, no, wait, I take that back. This looks good. This is perfectly fine with me. <laughs> Sometimes when it comes to knitting, my hair is everywhere. Sometimes when it comes to knitting, what I've realized the best course of action is just to not focus too much on the pattern or the details and just knit with your heart. <laughs> I'm trying to do that more, especially when it comes to making designs of my own. Because I get too caught up on like, how can it be graded? How can it be accessible to everyone? Is this something that I could write in a pattern? But, you know, ultimately stuff like these, like accessories, like the scrunchie that I made or hats, you know, these are items that are a little bit easier to write up and that I hope more people can just find ease in. That's something that I really want to do when it comes to making patterns is that I hope that it's something that knitters of any age can reasonably understand. So I hope to do that with my patterns. I think I'm just speaking out into the ether about it. Because I, I know how hard it is to read patterns sometimes. Uh, I've definitely seen patterns which or just confusing or they take some time to understand and because of that I don't really enjoy making the piece even though I know it's a very beautiful piece to have in my wardrobe and something that I would have really wanted but I do have to think about the readability and uh, how much I can understand and so I have to put it through that perspective too because you know not everyone uh, can understand it and how else are beginners going to level up to be intermediate or advanced if what they're reading, the pattern that they're reading is just too confusing, you know? I mentioned that in my like unpopular opinions. Cause I don't I, I don't think that was necessarily an unpopular opinions video. I just think it was me just saying things that I was feeling, which a lot of you seem to resonate with, which is cool. 
I don't have any like 10 millimeter double pointed needles so I'm just working this however I can. All right, so let me just pull this apart and we should be done with this hat in less time than I thought I would. I feel like I should have gone for a bigger uh, loop. Don't worry, uh, hopefully I'll have this video out sooner than later on how to knit this beanie because it, honestly it's a very easy beanie. You just gotta know how to knit in the round. So this is what it looks like. Uh, ignore the little strand. Wow. You know what I look like with the pigtails and this hat? I look like Spinelli uh, from Recess. I don't know if you've ever watched it. It's a Disney show. But look at that. I really like it. It's a very chunky beanie and it took me way less time than I thought it would. I feel like if I started knitting this and did the ribbing, like cast it on, knitted the ribbing, did the uh, stock in it, I think I could have probably done this all within an hour. Amazing. Awesome. <laughs> cool. I am very surprised that I was able to finish this so quickly. Uh, anyway, I think that is all from me. It hasn't been an hour, but we kind of estimate how much I knitted in like, let's say 40 minutes or so. So if I did 30 stitches by, I'm going to say 16 rows, which is 576. And then I also did some stock in that. I mean, I did some decreases. So let's say 16, 19 by 36 ish divided that by 40 minutes. It's about 17 uh, stitches in like a minute, let's say, give or take. It started raining, so you can probably hear that. So I'm going to end the video now, but I just want to say thank you so much for being here. And if you are at the end of this video, you're special. Thank you. Uh, if you like this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Bash Harry, and I will see you later. Bye!